Let's consider an example how to decompose a matrix into the Q and R matrices. So this is called the QR decomposition of the matrix. In order to do this, we need to follow the three steps. On the first step, if we're given a matrix M with the three columns, A, B, C, basically three vectors, we're going to obtain the three other vectors, big A and big B and big C, so that they are going to be orthogonal to each other. And on the second step, we are going to just normalize them. So on the first step, it doesn't matter what is the length of the A, B, and C, because on the second step, we are going to just normalize them. So basically, we're going to find a vector which is going to be in the same direction as the C, but it's going to be unit vector. So this is going to be Q3. So Q2, it's going to be the unit vector in the direction of the B. And Q1, it's going to be the unit vector in the direction of the A. So this is what we're going to do on the second step. So this first and the second step is called the Gram-Schmidt algorithm. And on the third step, we're going to find the matrix R using this formula by just multiplying the Q transposed to the M. So let's say we're given the M with the three columns. The first column is 1, 1, 1. The second column is 0, 1, 1. And the third column is 0, 0, 1. So by just applying the Gram-Schmidt algorithm, we're going to obtain the three orthonormal vectors on a base of the three vectors. So the big A is simply equal to the small a, 1, 1, 1. So big B is obtained using this formula. So the B minus the projection of the B onto the A, which is going to be B minus A transposed to the B divided to the A transposed to the A multiplied to the A, so, which is equal to 0, 1, 1, minus, so the A transpose is a B, it means that I need to multiply this vector to this vector as a scalar multiplication, right? Or you can write this as a 1, 1, 1, multiplied to the B, which is 0, 1, 1. So divided to A transpose is A, so basically I multiply the A vector to itself as a scalar multiplication, and additionally we have to multiply this to the A, which is 1, 1, 1. So let's simplify everything. It's going to be 0, 1, 1. If you multiply this vector to this one, you will need to multiply the first component with the first, second with the second, third with the third, and we need to add them. It's going to be 1 multiplied as a 0, plus 1 multiplied as a 1, plus 1 multiplied as a 1, divided to the same story with the second, uh, with the denominator. It's going to be 1 multiplied as a 1, plus 1 multiplied is a 1, plus 1 multiplied is a 1, multiply to this vector, 1, 1, and 1. So, which can be written as 0, 1, 1, minus 2 over 3 multiplied to the 1, 1, 1. So, if we subtract these two vectors, we're going to obtain the vector, which is going to be minus 2 over 3, 1 over 3, 1 over 3. So these two vectors A and big B are going to be orthogonal, so geometrically you can look to this like a roughly like a A, and we obtain another vector B, which is going to be perpendicular to this. So on the third step, we need to find this vector C using the formula. It's going to be C minus the projection of the small c onto the A, minus the projection of the C onto the B. And you see in this formula, so when we project the C onto the A and B, we need to do a lot of computations, and it's going to be not so easy for us if we just use this numbers, like a 2 over 3, 1 over 3, and 1 over 3. And maybe we need to just take this big B without this, like, a denominators. So the step, the, the basically... The goal of the first step of, the, uh, of this algorithm is to obtain the perpendicular vector a and b, and it doesn't really matter what, what is the length of this b. So you can take this b as a three times longer vector, right? But it's still going to be perpendicular. So basically, if the a is equal to 1, 1, 1, we can take the b as minus t, 1, 1. Basically, we're just going to multiply this vector to the 3, and this is still going to be okay because they are perpendicular. So on this, on, the, on this first step, we just need to obtain the two vectors, or three vectors, which are going to be perpendicular to each other, independently of the lengths. So <clears throat> we're going to find a C using the formula. So the C vector was equal to the 0, 0, 1. 
minus the projection of the C onto the A, it's A transpose to the C divided to the A transpose to the A multiplied to the A, minus the projection of the C onto the B, it's going to be B transpose to the C, B transpose to the B multiplied to the B. So let's do this. So it's going to be 0, 0, 1 minus A transposed, it's 1, 1, 1, multiplied to the C, it's 0, 0, 1. So divided to A transposed to A, so that this vector multiplied itself is equal to the 3, simply. And we multiply this additionally to the A, which is 1, 1, and 1. Minus, now we multiply the B transpose, which is minus T, 1, 1, to the C, which is 0, 0, 1. And we divide this to the B transpose multiplied to the B itself. It's going to be minus T in a square plus 1 in a square plus 1 in a square, which is 6. And this is multiplied additionally to the B, which is minus T, 1 and 1. So if we simplify everything, it is going to be 0, 0, 1, minus. So if you multiply this vector to this vector as a scalar multiplication, it's going to be 1 over 3 multiplied to the 1, 1 and 1. So minus, if we multiply this vector to this vector, we're also going to get 1 over 6 multiplied to the minus T, 1 and 1. So basically, if we're going to just like add the three vectors, what we're going to obtain is it's going to be 0 minus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3, right? Or sorry, T minus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3. So it's going to be the second row, it's going to be uh, 0 minus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 6, right? And the last row is going to be 1 minus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 6. So this is going to be 0. So minus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 6 is just simply minus 1 over 2. So since this is minus 1 over t, if it subtract this from the 1, it's going to be plus 1 over t. So on, the, on this step, we found the c vector, which is going to be perpendicular to the a and b, right? But since I have this t's, 1 over t's, I can just multiply the c to the t. Should be on the same line, right? And I can take the c as a mi 0, minus 1, and 1. And here's a trick. We can take this, just we'll simply take the C as the 0, minus 1, 1, because the most important thing is that the C is perpendicular to the B and A independently of its lengths. And we're just going to take the vectors A, B, and C as convenient as possible for us. So on the first step, we found the three vectors. And on the second step, we're going to just normalize them. So we are going to just divide those vectors to their lengths in order to make them as a unit vectors. It's going to be Q1 is equal to the A divided to the norm of the A. So since A is equal to the 1, 1, and 1, the norm of this vector A is found as the square of its components, the sum and the square root. It's going to be square root of 3. So what we have here is 1 divided to the square root of 3, 1, 1, and 1. It's going to be the first column of the Q matrix or token matrix. Q2 is B divided to the norm of the B. So the norm of the B is, so since the B is equal to minus T, 1, and 1, its norm is going to be minus T in a square, which is 4, plus 1 in a square, plus 1 in a square, and we take the square root from this, it's going to be square root of 6. It is going to be 1 divided to the square root of 6 multiplied to the b, which is minus t, 1 and 1. And we obtain the q3, the third column of the q matrix is c divided to the norm of the c. So c vector was equal to 0 minus 1 and 1. And the norm of the C is equal to the 0 in a square, which is 0, plus 1 in a square, or minus 1 in a square, which is 1, plus 1 in a square, which is also 1. It's going to be square root of t. And this is equal to 1 divided to the square root of t multiplied to the C, which is 0, minus 1, and 1. So we obtain this Q vector as 1 divided to the square root of 3, square root of 3 and square root of 3, minus 2 divided to the square root of 6. And the last column is going to be 0 minus 1 divided to the square root of t and 1 divided to the square root of t. 
And now in the last step, in the step number three, we are going to obtain the R by just multiplying the Q transpose to the M. So we basically are going to transpose this matrix Q. It is going to be one divided to the square root of three, and so on, minus two square root of six, one divided to the square root of six, and one divided to the square root of six, zero minus one divided to the square root of two, one divided to the square root of two, that's the Q transposed, and we're going to multiply this to the M, which was one, 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 zero, one, one, zero, zero, one. So we are going to multiply this matrices as a combination of the columns of the first matrix. So basically, we need to look to this three numbers, one, one, and one. What does it mean? It means that I need to multiply the first column of this matrix to the one, the second column of this matrix to the one, and the third column of this matrix to the one. Basically, we just need to add the three columns. So if we add the, all the three numbers on the first row, what we get is three divided to the square root of three. If we add all the numbers on the second row, we'll get zero. If we add all the numbers on the last row, we still get a zero. So the second column of this matrix are going to tell us the combination or the coefficients of the combination. We basically multiply the first column to the zero, second column to the one, and the third column to the one. Basically, we need to add the T columns and write this here as the second column of the resulting matrix. It is going to be this plus this is 2 divided to the square root of 3. This plus this is 2 divided to the square root of 6. This plus this is 0. And the last column here, it's going to tell us how we need to combine the columns of this matrix. We multiply the first column to the 0 second column to the zero, and the last column to the one. Basically, we just need to copy the last column to here. It's going to be a one divided to the square root of three, one divided to the square root of six, one divided to the square root of two, and this is our R matrix. So we obtained the Q matrix and the R matrix, and the multiplication of this Q matrix to the R is going to give us the M matrix.